Hey, Justin. Hey, Tracy. <laughs> We're super excited for this next episode of Speed at Scale. We're going to be profiling one of my favorite places to shop, which is Costco or Costco.com. I haven't been lately. Have you been lately? I have not been lately, but I've definitely been ordering online. Not too excited that there are some markups on my brisket, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so we've I been missed using... the samples online, Tracy. You, you just don't get the sampling. I should totally set up like in my house little sampling stations so I can pretend like I'm at Costco. But whenever I'm trying to do samples, my husband's always like, stop it, stop it, don't leave the cart. So <laughs> I don't know how that, that would all pan out at our house. I don't know. If I, if I put samples out, I think my kids would just eat them. Like I, it, the, the dad never gets a piece of the sample. Like let's let's be honest, they're children, and you know at this point they're much faster than I am, much much quicker. Not to mention, where, where do I get the toothpicks? <laughs> oh, probably on Costco.com. Oh yeah, that's right. We're tracing Costco.com today. <laughs> Well, if you like this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe. And do leave us a comment down below if you've got a site that you think we should be tracing. Just check out exactly how their web performance is working. Exactly. And we're totally not opposed to uh, doing some stack tracing for some uh, free stuff. So if you feel like sending us free stuff, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leet. And I'm just going to go in case you want to scream at me for any particular reason. <laughs> why did you why did you stack trace my website but anyways let's get right in I'm super excited to see what Costco.com has to offer yeah let's let's take a look at the old trace and see how we're doing So Costco.com, do you want to hear some fun facts about Costco.com? I do want to hear some fun facts about Costco.com, Tracy. Tell Costco. me more. Costco.com is a really, really good place to buy diamonds. Is it really? It is. They have extremely high quality diamonds and it's even, it's even hard to compete with wholesale prices at Costco. Like my wholesaler has a problem matching Costco prices. <laughs> that is... That is insane. I, I did not I did not know that about Costco. Yes, I mean I wouldn't say the same for some of their you know like their other stones, right? Like aquamarine and amethyst and things like that. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to look at the quality individually. Um, and I've never bought anything like that. But I mean Costco, you really cannot beat the diamond prices. Well, if you're out there and you're thinking to yourself, I need a diamond, Costco.com. And the quality. I mean, Costco does not mess around with their quality as well. So, anyways. Also, if you have any questions about diamonds, feel free to message me on Twitter. <laughs> yes, and do follow our other, you know, show, Diamonds. Because, yeah, we talk about diamonds. <laughs> we should just do, like, uh, just do this for, like, diamond websites, and then hopefully people just start sending us diamonds. Uh, I don't know if I, you know... I don't know if I can pull off that kind of ring. I don't know if I'm that kind of person, you know? It's gonna but be I'm like, sure... um, what's that whole thing where there's like the five, that one movie that just finished? The Infinity Ring. The Infinity? <laughs> oh, the, uh... You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, the Avengers one? Yes, yes. I guess, yeah, I guess I could create an actual glove. You know, I can go in the shop and just make my own diamond-based glove. I'm totally I into think... it. That, that, that would be rather ridiculous, <laughs> but fun. <laughs> All right, tell me about this crazy Costco.com stuff. So we're looking at Costco.com. We've got the mobile view on. In this case, we've got a little fi uh, Nexus 5X profile on. You can switch this on uh, to whatever, whatever phone device you like. You can also edit these, if you so please, with a device of your choosing. If you have a particular emulation you'd like to use, uh, feel free to set your own emulations at any time you like. Uh, in this case, we're just looking at the 5. Uh, we've loaded this up and uh, we've got some activity ongoing. So we're looking at the network panel first this time, just to sort of get a gauge to what's going on. We can see that we load a lot of things over the course of the sort of initial transfer stuff. Uh, about four megs of overall data. Um, we're looking at the five-ish second mark around here. I mean, if we expand out, uh, we can see that, yeah, there's about seven megs 
uh, that go into the main portion of the site. Um, you know, the logo is pretty prioritized high. Uh, you know, this is probably in our base pack. We can also see that we've got some min-based JavaScript that's firing up. Uh, about 107k on this one. We've got some other bigger resources down here. About sub-50. A little shopping list module helper. So we've got local, looks like some modules. I'm curious about those. So uh, what's the difference? Here. What's the what's the blue and what's the green? So the blue and the green are showing you how long you're basically waiting and how uh, quickly all that content downloads. So in this case, we're hovering over the actual Costco logo. We're saying, well, we're waiting for this first byte for a little more than a half a second, about 570 milliseconds. Uh, and we're waiting for that content to download in about 40 milliseconds. Um, so you've got about two seconds of overall uh, time mm. um, that's happening. So you can see that we're getting a lot of basically network information in this case. Um, mm -hmm. And you can actually also see on here they've got server timings turned on. So you can see that uh, this bottom section, which I cannot make my house <laughs> mouse hover over at the moment, um, you can see that the hit and the edge are also on there. So you can actually send server timings back and forth to help you gain a better gauge as you're looking at your resources that are coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. um, so again, some of these are gonna vary based on just overall how fast the server is. In this case, we're running fast 3G, so these things are gonna show you more time. So again, like why does a uh, 50K resource, Justin, take four seconds? Well, you know, in the, in the case of this thing, you know, it takes about three and a half seconds to, you know, three and a third seconds to download. Um, this content across the board, um, which looks like a, you know, was initialized on an onload trigger within the index page. So, again, you can always see what initiated your actual download. So in these cases, these are coming off the index. You can see sub-resources down here coming out of uh, this satellite lib file they have, or chunk. So you can see that, you know, these things are firing up. They're going to request other bits of data, other images, other JavaScript or CSS that they need. Uh, so you can always use the initiator to say, hey, you know what, uh, you know, where exactly are you coming from and why are you coming from here? So monitor and things of that nature. If we fire up and say, well, you know what, how does this stuff, you know, make my site perform? We can hit stop because I didn't actually clear this so I can get a nice clean line. Um, come back over here, reload this. And again, we're running fast 3G with a 4X slowdown. Um, if we were running on device, we probably wouldn't have to run with the CPU slow down. We just let the device do its job. Um, network wise gets a little trickier. Maybe sometimes you want to you know, throttle your network with you know, a proxy instance or uh, you know a tool uh, local to your machine, which you can also use. Um, that is at the heart, more hardware level or mm -hmm. the OS level. And this profile's taking a wee bit of time now, isn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. It's cooking. We'll give it to 40 seconds and then we're going to hit stop. Okay. So, sometimes when you've got a lot of activity, your trace won't stop because the, the load event never triggers out. Oh. Um, so, so, you just have to in press case, stop and then you'll see it. Yeah, you can press stop and it'll, it'll, it'll sort of show you, you know, sort of the lay of the land. Um, and in this case, it looks like... Let's open this up. So we don't have a lot of activity, really, on the scripting side. Uh, we see a lot of tiny tasks. We don't see a lot of stuff going on. But that render takes a mighty long time to come, doesn't it? 28-ish seconds. Yeah, I like this because you don't see a lot of those colors. You don't see a lot of the colors, but it is taking quite a long time to get where it wants to go. So what's um, up with that? So I guess you can't tell just by the colors. You can't tell just by the colors. Um, sometimes uh, we're gonna not a lot reload. of not a lot of reds. That's nice. Yeah, we're gonna reload this trace and see what's going on. Can you fake a trace? Uh, sort of. Uh, I suppose. <laughs> you could. I've, I mean, I've seen people do it where they're really? trying to meet it. Yeah, I've seen people try to meet an SLA where they're like, look, it's really fast. You're like, yeah, but you're not really actually shipping anything. Like, Ah, that's interesting. You can fake a trace. You know, again, like it's... Uh, so one, one thing that you can do, 
which, you know, if, you, if you're lazy loading a lot of things, a trace will complete very quickly a lot of times because mm -hmm. the trigger will stop and then you won't see the activity on the backside of it, so you have to be a little bit more cognizant of using the trace um, beyond, which is this little button right here. Like, you can record it and enter trace. Like, I can record this right now, scroll around, click my particular product, it's I feel like this product. I feel like and also then, in the Angular community, we just take lazy loading for granted because. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the build tools are going to give you lazy loading now, straight out of the gate. Um, yeah. You know, and you still have to be cognizant of where your splits are and how you want to load those things. Um, so we're obviously lovers of Google Chrome, right? I mean, both of us being Google developer experts, like you can't really not be lovers of Google Chrome. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely. I mean, you could. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I suppose you don't have to be. Um, <laughs> DevTools is sort of where, you know, I, I think Firefox's DevTools are very nice. I'm, I'm not going to discount them. I use Firefox's DevTools just as well. Does um, Firefox DevTools have this advanced of reporting for performance? It's it's not necessarily one to one, so you can trace and sort of gain insight into the way your site is performing in DevTools 2. Mm -hmm. um, you can take heaps and other sort of things out of out of that tooling. Um, you can use, a lot of it looks very similar on the surface. Um, under the hood, though, when we talk about a lot of these sort of performance metrics that we're pulling out of the performance timers, a lot of this is very specific to the engine it's coming from. So every mm -hmm. engine's a little bit different. So. Again, you want to optimize these things. Like, I, I'm not saying you should only program for one browser. Uh, this mm -hmm. is not the way you should do it. It's the web platform. Program for against, you know, how the standards are moving and things that sort of make things work. Um, yeah. Don't rely, don't rely on just one set of functionality. Um, so in this case, again, you can see, like, this is a trace between two pages. I've, you can see me scrolling in this case. Um, you can see that actually, in this case, the scroll is actually pretty fast. Like, you're not yeah. seeing a lot of dropped frames in this, in this case. Um, you can see that uh, they've got a scroll handler on here, it looks like, um, by the fire. Uh, What's a scroll handler? But, so a scroll handler is just basically listening for the event on scroll. So. Uh, oh, so that it auto-loads auto stuff. Yeah, so you can see that they're, it looks like they've got this event, and you've got this scroll right here, and it's calling y.handle within all.min. We can jump to all.min and see exactly... Uh, you know, what exactly is this doing. So in this case, it's triggering, uh, it looks like an event and then applying all the way up. So probably something that, again, trying to... What do you think sounds. of those websites that do, you know, the um, the infinite scroll versus like the, the button to say load more? The, the paradigm, like the infinite scroll thing is interesting. I'm not a, per I'm personally, I'm not a fan of it. Um, mm -hmm. Not for me. You know, from mm -hmm. a web performance standpoint, some people just do it wrong, where they're just injecting nodes on top of nodes on top of nodes, and it's actually very, very slow mm -hmm. um, because you're paying the cost of having to keep track of everything. Um, other cases, it works pretty well. Like, you can get, you know, this with, you know, uh, a virtual scroller or something of that extent. So they, they can be useful. Um, but scroll jacking in general, like, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, you know, we have better tools on that at this point. You have Intersection Observer, which will let you fire these things uh, easier based on places in the page. Um, so you can use the newer standards and the polyfills if you need the polyfills to sort of do that. Uh, I use Intersection Observer a lot. Uh, it's a very nice tool for when you need to load things at particular points on the page based on those scroll positions. Um, you know, in this trace, again, you can see that there is a lot of, uh, you know, cycle time. So in this case, we're traveling between pages here. So you can see that we've got, you know, a lot of dead space where we're waiting for that page to come back. Um, and again, in this case, we've only found five, you know, six search results. We can see that some of these modules are running. We're running some initial, um, it looks like they're using jQuery right here um, amongst, their, amongst their stack of things. Um, so, and again, like in a trace like this, you're going, well, I'm not seeing a lot of blocking activity, mm -hmm. Justin, um, but the paint timing is really, really long. Mm -hmm. And some of this comes down to, you know, how much, you know, again, how much are you sending down the wire um, in terms of what that page is and how much is that document going to cost you? Um, and again, you can go into audits and see very similar things. Ooh, for, that 20. Wait, yeah, go up, go I up. Mean, I want to see the whole thing. 
Uh, I mean, you're 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 getting a again middling sort of performance. Yeah. Uh, and again, you can see this even in the screenshots of Lighthouse is tracing yeah. this one. Hey, I've got a lot of you know blank sort of subsets here, uh, and you've got off-screen images, and again, like images are probably going to be you know the stack of problems in this case. Why are there like, off-screen images? So oh, just again, like, like anything within. Scrolled. Uh, yeah, they're 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 hidden beyond the line, right? So yeah. your your initial viewport doesn't have them. Like, are they? Oh, so they, they should be lazy loading front? it, and they're not doing any lazy loading. Yeah, you'd want to. I mean, you can use the new lazy load attribute that we sort of have coming onto the platform yeah. for images. Um, that's in Chrome now. It's gonna make its way through most things. Got a lazy uh, load. These are such easy fixes, man. They're pretty tiny fixes. Um, you know, over our, overall though, I mean, you've got some render blocking in here. And again, this is probably the, yeah, the min blocks. Again, the file size here is important. Like you don't want to send too much. Um, the unused CSS triggers out. So it looks like a 138. So there's a lot of CSS somewhere. I love that. that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like the point where it's like, wait, hold on. If we delete the CSS, what's going to happen? So <laughs> there's like, what did you say, 100 KB of it? Yeah, so, and again, like, you can see this is the big pack of CSS right here, and yeah. if we, if, if we're, if we, if we open up our coverage tool. That CSS and, hurts me a little, just to see it all jumbled up like that. Yeah, I mean, you want compact CSS, like, you don't want to burn bytes, but at the same time, you don't want to also, uh, you know, you don't want to ship stuff you're not using. And we've seen this previous, in previous episodes, too, where people are shipping way too much CSS, um, for their stuff. And again, like here, you can see that, uh, you know, there's a lot of CSS in here oh, that's yeah. just simply not used um, within this pack to render this page. And again, this might be, it's got an RWD on front of it, so my presumption is that in a uh, desktop usage case, you can sort of start to see as we sort of stretch this out that it is starting to use more bytes um, mm -hmm. as those cases trigger. Um, so is this like a, a problem with, um, you know, having a mobile site? It's like you have to remove, you kind of have to look at the CSS that the mobile site versus the desktop site uses and remove everything that's not being used when people load on mobile. Like, would that be the solution? I think that, that, that is one solution. Like, you can be more predictive based on the, the hints you might send back mm -hmm. to the server based on what the user's devices, you could say, hey, you know what, send me this, you know, I need to initially load something very fast for either one. So a lot of, you know, the one technique we use a lot is, you know, how fast can I, how fast can I render a header um, mm. with that sort of main block content that I want? Does it need to be very complicated? Do I need a lot of CSS to do that? And usually the answer is no. So you slim, down, you, you slim set that as a thing that you say, hey, you know what, this is going to be our fast, fast subsection. And then you load up additional things. Uh, the other way to get around a lot of this is just be, you know, be cognizant that you can use newer things to not have to ship so much CSS in the first place. Yeah. Um, you know, there are patterns that you can use, say, you know what, I'm going to apply a base set of these styles. I can use CSS custom properties. I can use uh, new Flexbox and Grid options, which are now pretty prevalent in most browsers. Um, you can get around a lot of these things where you just don't need, um, you know, a, a, a entire subsets of stuff. Um, and again, like in this case, you can see that they actually have a print style in here. Like, mm -hmm. m maybe we don't need to send the print style um, from print media if we're not directly on that page. Because mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. we can say, hey, you know what? Am I within this print view and load things? Which is a little bit tricky. Like, we don't have super great support. There have been bugs <laughs> in the past. So I feel your pain if you're thinking, man, printing on the web is hard. It is. Uh, I read a little bit of this. <laughs> um, so, so you can get you can get through quite a few different sections to sort of, again, slim down stuff. And again, some of this you're going to see right here that, you know, they're taking bytes that they don't have a lot of control over. You know, this is a tag sort of uh, from a third party, it looks like. Same thing with this. I mean, huge... people could definitely be like, look, your stuff is too slow. You better make it smaller. I'm not going to use your tool. I think that's, in a perfect world, that's where we should go. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, you, you, I think a lot of times the third-party resources we take on, or we have to take on as web developers, is very hard to get around. Yeah. Because they have their own requirements in terms of the way they fire up. Um, 
you know, you can see here that I mean, Lighthouse complains immediately, like, hey, these third-party resources are blocking your main thread up. Um, mm -hmm. Critia. Just, just, just or Criteo, whatever in, based on this. Yeah. And again, like, some of this might be the fact that, you know, Justin, where were those things at in the trace? Uh, mm -hmm. Again, the trace was so spread out in terms of its paint that we could probably dive a little bit deeper in there and figure out exactly where these things are that mm -hmm. not block. Um, but we are doing this off the cuff, which makes for exciting television. <laughs> or YouTubing or whatever. What, what do you call these things now? Is it television? It's kind of like television. Well, or do we call um, this profiling or stack tracing or... I mean, you can call it whatever you want. I mean, Is we, it just we call it profiling. You know, we, we call it, you know, I call it tracing most of the yeah. time. Not um, stack uh, tracing? Um, I mean, you can look at... Uh, so in, in different portions of this you are. If you're debugging something and you want to see your call stack, you can use a stack trace right here. Like okay. You can look and say, oh, this is tracing my or profiling. entire stream. Yeah, profile profiling is the way to go. Like if you're if you're if you're writing docs out there and you're thinking to yourself, how am I going to term this? Profiles. <laughs> <laughs> performance web performance profiles for all your performance needs. Bye today. So yeah, there are definitely improvements here on Costco that could be had. Um, you can uh, no PWA. No PWA in this case. Um, you know they do have some of the you know initial hallmarks, which hey. HTTPS, gotta have it. And then again, you've got some things in here, but again, it doesn't look like they have a manifest. Um, and again, we can validate that too by going here. Yeah. No manifest detected, no service worker detected. So again, you can add these things on um, progressively if you so wish. So what's your favorite thing to buy at Costco? Well, at this point, you know, I, I buy currency at Costco. Oh, I'm sorry, we call it toilet paper now. That's, that's <laughs> primarily my... I think we're at this point. I don't know when this episode will exactly air, but I'm pretty sure toilet paper at Costco now is a currency for all things. Yes, it's what's totally you, crazy. What, what's your favorite thing to buy at Costco, Tracy? Uh, diamonds and meat. Brisket, pork, pork belly, chicken. I feel like those are two things that inherently don't go together, but somehow do. <laughs> gotta get my, my diamonds, gotta get my, my meat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, love, love Costa. So a lot of really good takeaways today. Yeah, it's an interesting choice. Um, you know, when you've got big spans of blocking things, when you've got a lot of emptiness in it, you definitely want to trace more. So in this case, you know, I would definitely be tracing Costco more to figure out where exactly, you know, sort of the gaps are in that site. There's definitely some third-party resources in there that's probably that, that's very clearly blocking some things up in terms of third-party resources. There's definitely shipping too much code. Uh, you know, in terms of the CSS and some of those initial resources that might be able to be loaded later or put in use. Again, like you want to, you can be reactive to the way users use your site. Like, don't feel like you have to ship everything in the kitchen sink down the line to get there, particularly for web storefronts where you really want to get images to the end consumer so that we can go buy those diamonds and those meat products. Or in my case, currency is toilet paper. So you want to make sure you can ship those things quickly. Um, and if you don't, it, it becomes a very rough experience. And I, and I, I shop a lot on Costco, so um, you know, using their site on mobile, it, it gets a little tough sometimes. You know, just from a uh, usability standpoint. That midnight shopping, I can't tell you how many times I wake up at the, you know, in in the morning and be like, oh, look, I have all these things in my shopping cart before I fell asleep. So. <laughs> See, but at least you haven't got to that stage yet where you're like, you know what? My thumb is saying, add to cart. But this other thumb is saying, buy now. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's got my credit card on file. Send me these things. And the next thing you know, you've got, you know, half Very a pound good. of diamonds and meat. That's true. Half a pound of diamonds and meat. in that order. That sounds really great. <laughs> Cool. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Speed at Scale. Again, if you like our content, make sure to like and subscribe. My name is Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Lee. And I'm Justin. And do make sure to send us a comment down below if you're thinking, hey, you know what? I've got a site these people should take a look at. Or you have some toilet paper that you want to exchange for currency. Because yes. at this point, I think that's where we're at now as a world. Meat, diamonds, toilet paper. Any three you send to us. <laughs> we will be <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> awesome thanks again for watching everyone and have a great rest of your week